final topic in the course was vibrations. Remember, vibrations were kind of the, the bridge between statics and dynamics. If you have a static structure that is slightly perturbed, we have to consider the dynamic motions. And, and most often these are considered through vibrations. The, the basic model of vibrations is this, is that we have a force, a restoring force, once a, a structure is disturbed and that restoring force is characterized by a spring constant K and the magnitude of the force is proportional to the displacement. And of course we have, we know that the sum of all the forces on an object is ha has to equal the mass times the acceleration. And so we write it as this differential equation the second time derivative of x with respect to time times the mass is equal to the forces and that'll equal minus kx and so we write it this way mx double dot plus kx equals zero divide by the m so we've got x double dot the second derivative of x with respect to time plus k over m is times x is equal to zero and we found that when we solve this that k over m is equal to the frequency squared so whenever we write an equation that looks like this, we can, we can say that the natural frequency is whatever appears here. The square of the natural frequency is whatever appears here in this equation. Under the general topic of vibrations, we looked at, at three different subtopics. We looked at the conservation of energy, we looked at force vibrations, and then the third one was damped vibrations, which I'll get to in a second. So, so first, we when vibrations are occurring with, um, and if energy is conserved, we could always write it this way where we have a half times the mass times the velocity, so we've got x dot squared plus a half, this is the, kin the potential energy here, the kinetic energy, and we'll say that that's constant. So potential, kinetic, and we wrote the potential energy this way as a half kx squared, where k is, again, that spring constant. Now for forced vibrations, we wrote the equation this way, where we, we wrote, um, we had the same on the left-hand side, but we put the forcing term in here, where this is the frequency of the force, the, the forced vibrations, omega sub f. And we defined a magnification factor, which is 1 minus the forcing frequency divided by the natural frequency. And this natural frequency is going to be the square root of k over m from back here. And so this magnification factor tells you something about how much the amplitude grows. And you can see it's um, highly dependent upon the relationship between the forcing fre frequency and the natural frequency. And now here's the third topic under vibrations that we discussed, and that's damped vibrations. And the main idea here is that we add in a, a, a new term that with, that's um, kind of the friction term, and it's characterized by C. So C is somehow related to how much friction is in the system, and that's dependent upon the velocity, as you can see here. So we add this new term to the um, equation, and when we, we solve the differential equation, we find that there's this critical um, C coefficient, and that critical value, that critical coefficient has this particular value. It's 2m divided by the square root of k over m. And so there's really three types of damping, the, f um, the first is when this C is greater than the critical value. We call that heavy damping. And so heavy damping is non-oscillatory. There's no oscillations. <coughs> um, it's just, it's slowly, if you displace the system and it's heavily damped, it slowly goes back to equilibrium. Critical damping, which we defined right here, so when, when C is exactly equal to that, um, we have critical damping, and critical damping is, is kind of like heavy damping, except it returns, critical damping is the one case where it returns as fast as possible back to equilibrium without overshooting equilibrium.
So there's no oscillations again, but it um, returns to equilibrium as fast as possible. And then the third case is light damping. And so light damping, as there's some friction in the system, and if we drew out a system here where we have time and a displacement, we would see light damping would look something like this, where where the um, the amplitude is constantly getting smaller and smaller, but there's still oscillations. So those are the three types of damped vibration.